Hello and welcome to this tutorial on understanding call changes. I'm Richard Webster. I'm the chair of the New South Wales ACT, ACT branch of ANZAB. And uh, today we're going to learn about call changes. Okay, so before we start, this is the first in a series of talks. Uh, please look at the schedule that's been distributed on the mailing list, um, which you should have seen, uh, for any talks that you might want to attend. Uh, these are being given by some of the best people in from around the branch. Um, and it's not an exhaustive list. If you want to request a new topic or there's something that you're interested in, please let me know and we can, we can arrange that. So this talk is aimed at people who have mastered bell handling and are beginning to do some call changes. So that's okay. So before we start, let's uh, get some jargon out of the way. Um, so let's first define uh, what we mean by a row. So a row is uh, a sequence of bells, um, rounds being the simplest case where we start with the lightest bell, the one, and end with the heaviest bell, in this case, the six, and we ring from the, the highest note to the lowest note. So the order is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we can define other rows um, where the bells can be in any order. Um, but what's important is that each bell uh, only appears once. So when we're ringing, that bell will only uh, strike once and only once uh, for each row. So uh, here are some examples of other rows where the numbers uh, are all in different orders. Um, notice that uh, for today we're looking at six bells. Um, and the six is always at the back. Uh, just for simplicity. Um, okay, so next, what is a change? And we're doing call changes, we have to know what a change is. So a change is a transition between two rows. Um, so you can see we're looking at the same uh, rows that we had before, and for each uh, transition between the rows, we can see that two bells swap over. Um, so the first case, it's the three and the four swap over, then the two and the four, and then the three and the five. Uh, so when we're ringing, what will happen is the designated conductor says something and two bells swap over. Okay. So we know, now know what a row is and what a change is, um, but what is the point? So generally when we're doing call changes, uh, the point is that we're ringing for something, say a service or a wedding, um, we want to make it sound nice. Um, so what we do is we start in rounds and we move the bells around, swap bells over so that we get changes that sound nice. So here are some examples of some changes that um, that are conventionally uh, nice to listen to. So we have queens where we go down the odd bells and then down the even bells. So one, three, five, two, four, six. Um, this is going down a minor triad, then a major triad, if you're musical. Um, or Whittington's, which has going up the odds and then down the evens. Uh, and I'm not going to sing to, to save you from that misery. Um, and then finally, we have Tittums, uh, where the heavy bells, the four, five, and six, are intertwined with the lighter bells, the one, two, and three. So it goes one, four, two, five, three, six. So uh, one of the reasons we bring chord changes is to make it sound nice, to get into these musical rows. Um, but ultimately, we want to have fun and we want to enjoy ourselves. Um, and I think that's what's important. Okay, so just so that everyone's aware, there are four ways that a call might be changed, might be made. Uh, so uh, there's calling up. I think this is the most conventional way to do it in Australia. Um, or, or more generally just anywhere. Um, uh, so what the conductor, the person in charge will say is three to four um, or A to B. Um, and what, they, what they're doing is they're choosing the, the bell that's uh, earliest in the change and swapping it with the bell that's later in the change. So three being the earliest one, four being the, the latter one. Three to four means three and four swap over. Uh, you could call in pairs, and this is essentially the same, uh, but the, what, what is said is different. So in this case, 
the, the conductor will say three and four change. And that's the instruction to those ringing the three and four that they need to swap that order. Uh, less common is calling down. And this is what I was taught when I first learned to ring, but now I'm more familiar with calling up. Uh, in this case, the, the, the instruction is for the bell that's later in the change to ring after a bell that is earlier in the change. So uh, in this case, the call is four to two, and this does the same change before the three and the four swap over. Uh, and the instruction is for the four to follow the two. Um, the reason this is less familiar uh, or le less rung or less called is that uh, the three is not mentioned in the call. And so it can be confusing that the person who's moving to go slower isn't actually mentioned. Um, so it's easier to teach calling up. And finally, um, there are other ways uh, that a call might be made. Uh, one example being if you went to a, a, a tower where everyone rings together all the time and you're visiting, um, they might have their own special way of doing it. They might always ring to queens and then back to rounds. And the, everyone's really familiar with that at that tower. And so the conductor only has to say next for everyone to know what the next change is. Now you being a, um, a uh, visitor of that tower might, might be completely bamboozled by that. Um, uh, but it's, it's good to, be, to know what ways calls can be made. Uh, so today we're going to be using the calling up um, uh, way. Okay, so I think we've got all the definitions out of the way now. Um, so we can now go on to talk about what happens during a call. And like I say, the instructions will all be in the calling up manner. Okay, so by starting in rounds, the order of the bells is one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and we're ringing that for a bit. And then suddenly the conductor will say three to four. Now this is an, ins an instruction for two of the bells to swap over. Um, and it'll always be this A to B, um, where A and B are two of the bells. So what happens? Well, first ring at A, in this case the three, uh, will ring slower for one below to follow ring at B, in this case the four. Okay, so let's show that. So ring at A has rang slower for one below and has moved here. Uh, ring at B now moves faster for one blow, uh, and so is earlier on in the change, uh, and now has to follow bell number two. So ring B, who was following ring A, uh, now follows ring A two. Um, so is anyone else affected by by this call change? Well, not directly, but you can see that the five who was following the four, now follows the three. So they need to stay at the same speed, um, but they need to be aware that the bells in front of them have changed. Okay. Um, there's a special case, I guess, where you're at the front of the change. And again, we're gonna sh show the example of rounds, but the, the numbers could be, could be anything. That's why it's important to say A, B, and C. Um, so if, if we're at the front of the change, then the call might be made one to two. In this case, uh, ringer B is going to ring faster to, uh, to move earlier in the change, uh, but they have no one to, to follow. So they need to be aware that they're now having to lead off the end of the last stroke of the six. Uh, so uh, ringer B, in this case the two, leads ringer A, the one, uh, Ring slower for one blow to follow ring a B and ring a three, uh, C, who's the three in this case, rings at the same speed and follows ring a A, which is the one. Okay, so if there's anything you take home from, from this uh, short tutorial, it's that uh, it's these three rules. So for an, for an up change, A to B, A follows B and goes slow for one blow to achieve that. Uh, rule number two is that bell ringer B follows the person, the bell, who A was following. Uh, so they go quickly to achieve that. 
And the third rule is that if you were following B, you now follow A. So you're C and you stay the same. Uh, so here's an example, um, which we should all be familiar with. Um, so the bells are in the order of three, two, five, one, four, six, just some random order. And if the change is five to one, what is the next change? Okay, so uh, I'll give you a little time to work that out. Okay, so ringer A, the five, follows ringer B. So the five is going to follow the one. Ring of B, who is the one, follows the bell who A was following. The one has to follow now the two. It goes quick to achieve that. And the four who was following ring of B now follows ring of A, and that's the five. So you can see the order is now three, two, one, five, four, six. Okay. Um, so let's have some random examples. Uh, just to run that through. Now, uh, this is now recorded, um, so you can do this at home uh, and then check your answers. So, uh, if the call is five to two, what's the next change? Um, you can work that out at home. Um, and also think about uh, who is the two now following, who's the five now following, uh, and here is the four now following. Okay, so you should have said three, two, five, four, one, six. Okay, good. So another few of these. Uh, four to one. Uh, what's the next uh, sequence? What's the next row after this change? I hope you got that right. Okay, and then what's the final one? Five to one. Uh, that's just the example from the last slide. Okay, good. Okay, so if there's a second thing that I want you to take on from this, it's this slide. And this is what you need to do and what you need to know when you're ringing call changes. So the first thing that's most crucial is that we know we need to know who we are following. So uh, at all times, you should know which bell you're following. Obviously in rounds, if you're, if you're ringing rounds, then you're just gonna be ringing the bell uh, uh, one up from you. So if you're following the, the four, then you'll be following the three, for example. Um, but it might be that you're ringing something more complicated, um, a more complicated change, such as on the last slide, something a bit more random, and the bells could be in any order. So it's it's important that you know who you are following. Um, uh, if you don't know, or if you forget, say you're distracted by something and you, and you forget, then you can always ask. Um, and if you're learning, uh, you shouldn't be faced with any um, uh, any consternation for that. So the second thing uh, we need to know is we need to know who the bell we are following is following. So we don't just need to know the, the, the bell uh, one earlier in, in the row, but we need to know two earlier in the row as well. And the reason for that is that if we're ringing uh, bell number B, so that the second uh, bell in the A to B call, then we ring fast for one blow and then follow the bell that A was following. So in the example, one, two, three, four, five, six rounds with the call three to four, the four is now gonna follow the bell three was following, which is, we know the two, um, uh, but to make it easier when the call is made, you have to know, you have to think in advance, to work out who the three was following to start with. Um, so there are a few ways we can we can achieve that. So we can simply look at who they are looking at. Normally, when people are ringing, they um, uh, they they're, they're visually looking at the the bed in front that they're following. Um, now some some ringers don't do this and they look at the floor and that's really annoying. Um, in which case, the best thing to do is to look at the ropes. And so obviously, when we're ringing, the ropes fall down in the sequence that the bells are in, uh, if everything's going well. Um, so if you can see that, that's called rope sight, and that's fantastic. 
Um, it can take a bit of time to get used to that. And so I advise trying to look at who the person's looking at first and then looking to see the order the ropes fall down in. So looking at the sallies or looking at people's hands. Um, uh, and that's that's good. Um, and the final thing to know that we need to know is, are they leading? Um, so if they're leading, then that makes the rope side a little bit more complicated. But they should be looking then at the tenor. Um, uh, and you'll you'll notice that when they're leading, that the, the backstroke and the handstroke uh, are out of sync. Um, okay, so then uh, what do we need to do? Well, we always need to pay attention. So the call can be made at any time and it could affect us. It could not affect us. So we could be in a situation where we've not been affected, say we're ringing um, the one, yeah? We might be leading for a long time and then suddenly, um, suddenly the call one to six is made. And in which case we then have to follow the six. And then if we weren't paying attention because we kind of fallen asleep, then uh, that could be quite uh, uh, startling. So uh, we always need to pay attention and just be aware that calls can be made at any time. Okay, so that's the, this is the final slide. Um, these are some worked examples you can do at home and you can uh, work out what the, the following change should be and then work out what the musical changes uh, in these chord changes are. Um, and try and think about uh, if you were ringing, say the four, what bell were you following? What bell are you now following? And uh, uh, yeah, try, try and think about it as if you were ringing. Um, and that should be good. So thank you for taking the time to uh, to watch this video. Um, I hope it helps learning call changes. Uh, yeah, so thank you.